that Hungary is going in the wrong direction, in the direction of illiberal democracy, and we decry this. Others, the EPP, have actually defended Orban. There will be a resolution voted tomorrow in the parliament, and it will request that the council evaluate the status and situation of democracy in Hungary and whether it, the current situation can be deemed in line with the principles of the European Union and the and compliance with Article 7 and implementation of the principles thereof. We cannot allow any further deterioration in terms of compliance with the principles of democracy, which are such a valuable principle, and therefore we need to focus each and every battle on defending to the hilt the principles on which d democracy and our society are founded. And I deeply regret the fact that a political family which subscribes to the values of the European Union, such as the EPP, will not embrace the principles of the debate, we, uh, the battle we are fighting with us in the self-same way. The EPP position is crystal clear. If you look at the text, which is available, you'll see that our resolution for tomorrow's vote has been submitted, and we voice a number of points of criticism on hung the uh, recent events and behaviour in Hungary. We've talked about the Hungarian government's attitude and its unacceptable behaviour in certain issu issues in certain areas, and we've said that we want Viktor Orban to draw the logical consequences and to act upon the urgings of the European, commun uh, European Commission. There is, of course, divergence of view in the European Parliament. The left is wanting to trigger Article 7. Article 38 is related to that. And we feel that Viktor Orban should be given an opportunity first to react to the procedures which are underway in the European Union. This is what we did in the case of Poland, although it has to be said in terms of Poland with the action on the Constitutional Court, that was a huge problem. No Liberals, Greens nor Socialists actually asked for the triggering of Article 7 despite what happened with the Constitutional Court in Poland. This is partly because the feeling was that Timmermans should be entrusted to carry out negotiations in the first in instance, and we would then review our position. So we felt that that was a very strong signal emanating from the European Parliament. And we felt that it was a strong signal, not least because it was based on a broad majority speaking out in favour of importance of constitutional states and the rule of law. I think it would be a pity if, for procedural reasons, the left were to break the unity that's existed hitherto in the European Parliament in the context of Poland. And if we comply with procedure, we can't be accused, we don't want to be accused of uh, being above the law, certainly not if this could be interpreted as party political and party politically motivated. Therefore, it is very important that although there is a party political aspect to this, we rise above that and we are above any sort of uh, suggestions that there could be party political considerations here. Thank you. The EPP has so far not signed up for the resolution. The resolution basically says that our Home Affairs Committee uh, should make a uh, report on the Article 7 procedure with regards to Hungary. Um, it would be the first time for a long uh, time that, the, that we would have a Hungary report, but also one that's very clearly aimed at the Article 7, because we're not ready to any longer just stand by and, and watch what's happening in Hungary with all the problems with the university, uh, with the NGO law, with the refugees, with so many um, problems that we see in Hungary. And, uh, and we, we would uh, feel it's a great pity if the EPP were to protect its own member. And we hope that the EPP can still join our motion for resolution.